You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. I'm Ryan Sickler. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Uh, please go out, get the album, get a hold of yourself. It's available everywhere you get music, albums, podcasts, all that shit. Uh, it's still new. You think you're allowed to, don't put it on him yet. I don't want people to know who it is, but I'm going to look over here. If it's less than six months, am I still allowed to call it a new album? <laughs> no. Nope. What's the time limit like on a new? A couple, three months, maybe? Three months. So my old album, get a hold of yourself. <laughs> Still available out there, y'all. Uh, also, some dates. I am going to be in Vegas uh, coming up here this weekend, April 26th and 27th, uh, or this month here, April 26th and 27th. Edmonton, May 16th through the 18th. I'll be doing some dates with Tom Segura, June 13th through the 15th in Richmond, Maryland, and Atlantic City. And then the 27th and 30th of June with Tommy Buns in Tulsa, Wichita, and Kansas City. And then August 1st through the 3rd, I'll be at the House of Comedy in Minnesota. Um, and as always, i like to say thank you for all the support. I know this is a new podcast. Some of you just joining. We have a lot of fun here. Uh, there is merch available. Just go over to the honeydewpodcast.com. Get your shirts, get your stickers, whatever. Email me, honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, I still have to read this shit because I don't know all of it. I couldn't make it all fucking cohesive. Facebook, the Honeydew Podcast. Twitter at honeydew pod and again for all you old crab feast fans uh you're gonna have to resubscribe episodes are going up it's all gonna be worked out don't worry they'll be free they'll be there you'll be able to get them on whatever platform you're on and if you can't get it on that platform get a new goddamn platform uh over here having some fun with the not so fun times uh and i'm very excited to introduce this guest that was already interrupting my new album speech <laughs> Because uh, he is perfect for the honeydew, a crab feast favorite, ladies and gentlemen, Dave Anthony. Hello, thank you, just thank you, bud. A, just call it a fucking album. Why you? Why do you gotta call it new or old? I like adjectives. What am, I, what am I just going like? Hey, man, I got an album out. If you guys haven't heard it, because you you're past the new stage, right? What's new? You said three months. I think three I'm months. Past but new yeah, then. you're I was, and six it was like right. It was beginning of December, basically. Yeah, yeah. No, it's that's a, just say if you Five haven't heard months. my album yet, buy that. Like, right, if so you, if you haven't heard my album say, yet, buy uh, it. You can say funny. Yeah, see, that's where I don't like. I'd rather go new and old. <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> Do you yeah. have anything you would like to promote, new or old? Uh, I mean, nothing comedy wise. I'm on the dollop, my podcast, but I, I started a, a environmental group because uh, everyone's freaking out about the climate. Have you heard of climate change? It's a mm. thing. Yeah, it's a Cl thing. Our climate's changing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so uh, they did this a lot of si a lot of psych psychological studies, and when people hear about it, they just shut down. They don't do anything. So like the guy, they internally just freeze. Yeah, they like people get so freaked out by it that they don't know what to do, and then they just freeze up and they don't they and do nobody, anything. They don't do anything. So the idea that we came up with is to get people together in groups where they can talk about it in their, you know, towns or whatever. And, uh, and then from that actually action, go implement. Uh, yeah. And then some, then you figure out what to do in your town or you, or you, you know, whatever you'd call politics, whatever the fuck it is. But it's a place where, cause a lot of people I say, I, I don't, you know, I can't bring this up at work or I can't cause people stare at me like I'm crazy. So it's like a place where, like, if you're the one person that's recycling cans or some totally shit over there, that's exactly right. So uh, it's called Planet Change Ten, P L A N I T Change Ten. Uh, the website will be up next month. Well done on that. Yeah, right. That was I Gareth. That was Gareth. Oh, was it? Yeah. Right. And then we're on Twitter and uh, Facebook and Instagram. So before the website goes up, you can jump on there. So you know when the website. And once you're in the once the website kicks in, it'll will group you by where you where you are. So. Yeah. Is this U.S. only right now? No, it's going to be everywhere in the world. We have a lot of people in Australia that are doing it, too. And aren't we you have... guys big over in, like, Iceland and shit? I wish we... I mean, we, we did a tour of Iceland, yeah. but it was more of me calling up my agent and saying, hey, I want to take a vacation to Iceland. How can I write off some of that? <laughs> you took a tour of Iceland or you did a tour through no, Iceland? No, I was like, hey, man, I want to... I just... No, I wanted to take a vacation with my family, and I was like, I want to take a vacation to Iceland? Is there a way we could do a show there? And my agent, who's amazing agent, was like, yeah. And then we were booked in the biggest theater 
in Iceland. It was it was fucking hilarious. I got a 900 seat <laughs> right of that. Uh, okay, all right, we can do that. You sold 30 tickets. All right, hey, 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 I've done I've done it for less. <laughs> we actually got like 400 people, but I would say two thirds had no idea what it was, and they just came down because they're like show. No one does shows here. So. Yeah, right. Who yeah. does that? Yeah. It was funny. They don't have stand up there. I see. It blows me away that um, all these countries that don't. It, shit, even some of these, our states don't have it. I've been hit yeah. up by people in Montana are like, look, we have money, jobs. <laughs> yeah. We like to laugh. We don't have fucking comedy. If you just come to a bar, 800 people show up. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's you crazy. Know? But they, I think Montana doesn't deserve, deserve comedy. Deserve uh, it. Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Oklahoma deserves it. I know they have some clubs there, and I've done them. I don't think they deserve it. Those are the three. Just those three states? Yeah, the rest of them can have comedy. All right. I want more comedy in uh, Alaska because I want to go up there. I've never been there. There's some gigs up in Alaska. Yeah, I know, but that, have you heard about the Glory Hole guy? No. What? <laughs> Educate me right now. I mean, listen, I've heard about Glory Hole guys. I've never heard about the Glory I mean, Hole guy. Is, this is like the king of Glory Holes. <laughs> So, so Will Anderson goes up there and he's doing whatever that tour is where you go to crazy towns. Of course it's Will Anderson. Yeah, and someone's like, hey, there's uh, there's this famous glory hole. And he's like, what? And he goes, there's a website. So he goes to the website. And I remember I found it after he told me the story. And it's a dude and he's got a house. And you go to his house. His and house. He, and he gives you a phone number and you text him before you come. So when you're like five minutes out, you text him so he can get in position. <laughs> and then you go through his front door and cruise in. He's built a little room. Love what you done with the parlor, man. <laughs> it's good. I'm here. I can see businesses booming, man. <laughs> and Are they, these real hummels? <laughs> hey, honey, could you take off? I got a guy, <laughs> I got a guy coming over. <laughs> I got a 930. Just take the kids and get out for like 10. <laughs> It's just the time. <laughs> I got a twelve fifteen today. So then you just go there. So and, I'm, I'm and there's like approaching a TV. and texting like I am yep. on my way. And then there's a glory hole, and you put your you put it in there. Yeah, and there's no, a TV there. that he set up that you can watch while you're getting while he sucks you. <laughs> you're watching him? No, it's just a TV. You can watch. Oh, whatever you can you just want. put whatever you want. You can be like hey. <laughs> <laughs> So if you <laughs> Passwords for Netflix, glo Glory Hole, capital G, capital H. Oh, okay. All right, yeah, I wonder. Oh, there it is. There it is. I wanted to. Oh, yeah, so uh, that's the thing and in how Alaska. You, well, I, I was about to ask, how do you know what you're getting? But I guess you'll feel what you're getting. Is it always a blowjob or is it, is I it, think a, it's, is it, is it house's choice? I, I think it's always a blowjob. <laughs> I think it's a classic glory hole situation. At his house. Yeah, at his, it's at his fucking house. That's fucking freelancing at its finest right Dude, there, man. But it's also like... Entrepreneur. I mean, yeah, well, here's a guy who's out in Alaska and he's like, what do I like doing? I like sucking dick. I also like living out in the middle of nowhere. So how how can I make this work? And he fucking put it together. He's like, thank God for the internet. And he probably used to put ads in the back of comic books and shit. And now, now he's got the internet and he's got a website and you know, thank God for Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing that I find so bizarre about that. I don't think he's the crazy one. No. Oh, fuck no. Anyone that would go to that house and do that no. is absolutely fucking insane. Like, I know that he's yes. letting strangers in, and yeah, they could cut his throat, but you got to get through that fucking sheetrock. He's safe on the other side. He's, uh, yeah. he's probably got an armed fortress over there where you're not going to get him. 100%. And you fuck with him, he's probably got, you know, spikes. Oh, that I, could, pop I could just up picture anything. a little guillotine behind the yes, hole to chop exactly. your dick off. Yep, and like, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but also, that's just like, hey, where, where are you going? Oh, I'm going to go get murdered right now now yeah right, cool because you're never going to tell anybody you're going to the glory hole i'm going so to this perfect... guy's house to put yeah. my dick in a hole in his wall so he can suck it it's the perfect setup for I'll a murder i'll be back in 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> it is the perfect setup for a murder it'd be weird driving out of there they're just like what did i just do man i mean i feel good i feel relaxed but what did i do right think about it. i should i should leave a let me go back and see if i <laughs> <laughs> maybe i made a mistake maybe i didn't uh yeah that's so that's yeah i that's i can't i mean you know what i was about to say i can't believe that's a real thing but i 100 percent can believe that's a real thing you get out there in the middle of nowhere and you know there's i think there's one woman for every 10 dudes in alaska and so you just want your dick sucked 
that guy's putting her out of business. Okay? <laughs> he is. He's like, I'll show this bitch. I'll show this bitch. Okay. And there's no woman out there that's going to be doing that. Yeah, come in my no. home and no. just put it in this hole here. No. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Any that's anyway that's when I bottomed out. That's my story. <laughs> <laughs> on the drive, on the drive away, you drive bottomed away. out. What am I doing? Uh, you're like I don't have anything to promote. I've got this environment <laughs> group, and you know about the glory hole guy. <laughs> that's what you just took time to promote. <laughs> that guy's traffic. He's gonna be God. I'm sucking a lot of dicks this week. I wonder what the fuck's going on, man. Man, Sponsored I got to buy Burt's beeswax. <laughs> His website's just getting a spike. He's like, oh my God, I'm going to be so busy. I can't believe my lips are chapped right now. I also think he might subcontract too. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? You'll never totally. know if it's him back That's there. right. You, you don't, don't know. know if it's him. You, you, and you go buddies. in there to get you your dick nothing. sucked. You, you and one nothing. day you're like, hey, what the fuck's going on back there? This isn't the usual. Carl, is that you? <laughs> mm, doesn't feel like it, man. Doesn't feel like it. Carl's on vacation. My name's Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> well, hurry to fuck up, Lenny. I don't appreciate any of this, but hurry to fuck up. <clears throat> All right. So I had reached out to you about this show because, and I was telling you before we started that uh, I just always had fun having you on the feast. And one of the stories you told that that stuck with me was about a time your dad tackled you and you said it was the closest to a hug. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. That you had gotten from him. And I was like, Dave Anthony would be fucking perfect for this. Yeah. I mean, I've had a lot of shit happen. Yeah, it has been a great ride. I mean, it's good now, but I had a fucking terrible, the whole thing from beginning to <laughs> beginning till I was about 36. God, that's it what fucking I, I, sucked. Yeah, that's what everyone's telling me in their really? 30s, 40s. For me, it was even, I mean, it got there, but the, like really clear, not till my forties. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, I mean, comedians, obviously we come from fucked up places. Oh. That's why we do what we do. I mean, there's no darker people in comedians that I've ever met, but those darker people, the other dark ones don't sit and laugh at it. That's like right. They make glory holes. And yeah, they in make Alaska glory holes. And and fuck this is how I'm going to work it yeah. out. Yeah. And every once in a while he stops sucking. He goes, I just wish the open mic had gone better. Cause I wouldn't be doing <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah so i like, that's what i i know i was 36 because uh i that's when i fucking just bottomed out and just everything what is fucking, bottom okay out? so i was living uh i moved out here uh with this uh woman i'm engaged to and uh and when you're fucked up you attract fucked up people that's basically how it works yeah uh, so I didn't know what the deal was with her. I was like, this, there's just some weird shit going on. Um, she didn't know, she didn't understand money at all. And I say it like one day I, I got a Lexus commercial. It was my first commercial ever. I'm like, I got a Lexus commercial. And then she comes home from work and she goes, I quit my job. You got a Lexus commercial. I'm like, that's not, it's going to run for three weeks. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> it's regional. God damn it. Oh, well, I took a shit on the ball success, so I think uh, I think I might be looking for a new job. Yeah, so uh, she didn't know how to drive, and she refused to learn how to drive, so I had to drive her everywhere. And uh, and she would just we had we literally had like forty bottles of shampoo. Like she would just walk by stuff and buy. I thought it. you were gonna say champagne. I swear to God, you got you got really far into that word before he took a left turn on me. <laughs> Champagne would make a lot more we were sense. Just re we were just ready to celebrate, man. We were going to do it whenever it happened. I'm sorry. I went overboard with this Lexus commercial. Thing. <laughs> There's a zebra being delivered tomorrow. <laughs> so she was always out of money, and I was paying for everything. And then um, and my career wasn't doing that hot. And then one day we got a call. Uh, I don't know if I told you the story on the crab piece, but uh, I get up in the morning, and she's crying. She's, like, l just losing it. And I'm like, what's going on? She goes, I can't tell you. And I'm like, you got, you, we're, in, we're at this point, we're engaged. Because yeah. why wouldn't I marry this woman? It was yeah. all so great. Sounds perfect. And uh, and she's bawling and freaking out. I'm like, look, we're getting married. You, you can't not tell me. You got to tell me everything. So the mob had called. The mob. The mob. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I had a cousin. We had the mob. The Duke called. The Duke. 
Actually, someone called on the Duke's behalf and said, tell him the oh, Duke called. Yeah, so someone else like, calls. This is fucking awesome, yeah. Yeah, so this guy, uh, so it turns out what had happened was after her, after we got engaged, her dad borrowed $5,000 from the mob and took it to the track because he he couldn't afford a wedding for us. <clears throat> so his idea, and you can see how the... Oh, I'm feeling this strategy, yeah. <laughs> You see how this works. Some long shots. Yeah, that's there, right. You know, and and just all great, five on one. Oh, race. <laughs> I don't know how much you I did. Mean, on you got to scatter it up a little. I never, I never went into like so. Which horses did you bet on? Or um, uh, so he lost it all in a day, and so now he was paying weekly payments, and now he couldn't pay them anymore. Like he had no five more. grand is probably what with them with juice and everything. It's like he, he'd, already, he'd already paid them like 10 grand and he still owed five grand. Like you just keep paying. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, 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 that doesn't take anything off the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is all interest. <laughs> interest. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so he, uh, so he, he sold all of his tons of his possessions and he's like, I, I, I don't know what to do. And the mob, calls him up and says well so this is john Gotti jr's crew so it's kind of a sad crew and they're out in long island and he's in brooklyn and so they oh, john Gotti family that's with dave anthony's thoughts alone i thought hey was pretty uh, solid uh, yeah he think i think you're kind of weak <laughs> uh, i don't like the clothing it's all very stupid <laughs> so uh so they call him up and they say buy a ticket, get on the train, and come out to Long Island, we're gonna break your legs. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Pay for yourself to come to your own leg break it's party. It's the most fucked up, like, or we'll come and kill you. Uh, so, yeah, so he has to go buy, he, so he's, he, he's like, um, you know, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> that sounds like a bad deal for me. Uh, and then uh, somehow one of the mob guys figured out my fiance's phone number. Somehow, or he was but like, you know, I, instead I, of getting my legs broke, let me give you my dog. <laughs> <laughs> fiance's name's Dave. <laughs> Probably not home. Spends a lot of time in Alaska. <laughs> If he's not working in Alaska, but that guy loves to work up there. I'll tell you, man. He I know, is he a lumberjack? I don't know what he does. <laughs> um, so, so she gets his call, and they tell her, and they want $5,000. And so she's fr- freaking out, and I'm just like, okay, I have to pay this. Like, what else am I going to do, yeah. right? <clears throat> and then I – so this all happens in one day. Like, I, I call back the gangster – and I'm like, hey, uh, I'm Dave. I'm her, you know, Jenny's fiance. And he's like, uh, yeah, very, we he's heard very about, We heard like, about you. Her yeah, dad yeah. Oh, wait, yeah. Uh, congratulations. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear your hair's really clean. You got a lot of shampoo. <laughs> Looks like you're all going to get married at the courthouse now. But uh, congrats, man. So, uh, so he says, uh, hey, uh, do you want to pay this off? And I was like, yeah, I'll. I'll take care of it. I have I have that in my. Thank God, that's all my savings. And, uh, <laughs> and so, um, so he everything I have. he goes. Uh, so he goes. So you're gonna you're gonna pay this debt. I go. Yeah. He goes. I want you to say these words. This debt is now mine. And I'm like, I'll pay the debt. He goes. Say the words. <laughs> And I'm like, Gee, I guess Jesus Christ, you guys are so fucking ridiculous. Like, I'm gonna pay you the fucking money. He goes, you're taking over the debt. And I'm like, fuck, where's this gonna but go? But if I pay you five thousand yeah. dollars, yeah, it's gone. And I'm like, I'm like, if I'm taking over the debt, why, why do I have to say this? If, right. I, if I'm paying you, he goes, it's how it works. I'm like, okay, the code of fucking idiots. Uh, and then you guys are all gonna squeal on each other, even though, oh yeah, there's a same code. Like, it's all that shit. So, um, I say that i'm like i am taking over the debt it is now my debt and he goes okay now i'm going to give you a bank account number he gives me his wife's bank account number and i go to the bank and i have the money wired to her 
And then I go home, call him again. And he's like, the debt is now paid. It's over. And he goes, you should get him some help. I'm like, yeah, that, thank you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have some other shit to deal with also. Uh, so I got him I'm my, booking an Alaskan <laughs> cruise. I got a lot of shit going on, man. <laughs> Uh, and then my and then my fiance breaks down and tells me that he was a degenerate gambler growing up. That's when no one in his family will have anything to do with him. He, was, her mother would make money and they'd hide it in the sock drawer, and the dad would come home and rifle through all the clothes and, and like it was just they lived a nightmare. And I was like, oh, that's why we're together because you also had a fucked up background. So at that point, I was literally just done. Like it was just like the switch turned off, and I was like, whoop, we're fucking over. It's all over. So now I'm living alone. <clears throat> I'm super depressed. Uh, I'm a guy with two cats, which is pretty hot to most women are like, that's women. If you were in LA and you're like, I have two cats, they're like, take your clothes yeah, off. Take we're going to fuck off right now. Do you, if you have two cats and pickles, you're getting angry. <laughs> yeah. So so I start going to this thing called Al-Anon, which is Children of Alcoholic Kids. Uh, it's like a 12-step program, but it's for not people who are addicted to stuff. You just, you're basically addicted to, to crazy people and yeah. crazy shit. So I meet, a, I meet a woman in there. We start dating. Uh, she breaks up with me. And I remember the night. Is that forbidden or any of that shit? Or it, is that you're not like supposed code? to, but I waited. I wait. You're supposed to like wait a year before you start dating. And I did. I waited a year. And then, so then you're supposed to, then it's fine. It's supposed to be. Um, so, uh, so I, I'm with her for a while. I'm super into her. She breaks up with me. And I remember the night she broke up with me. It was the night John Kerry got the Democratic nomination because I was sitting there watching and she came over and I was like, sit down. And she's like, I'm just going to hang. I'm going to sit on the other chair. And I was like, okay. And I had, I was eating like a burrito and asparagus and she, and she sits there and I'm like, is there something you want to, is there something going on? And she goes, no, just go ahead and finish your burrito and your asparagus. And so I sit there and she's not saying anything. And I'm quietly eating my burrito and asparagus, you, watching think, the John Kerry. Do you think it's coming? Do you no, I have no, no fucking sense. clue. And then I finish and she's like, I, I, why we need to, you know, end this. It's just not working out for me. And she, and, and I'm just totally blindsided. So I lose my fucking shit. And when I had when I had my first breakup, when I was young, so my first girlfriend was Karen Kilgariff, who was on your last episode. Oh, yes. Or, or a few episodes ago, whatever. Whenever this yeah. airs. Um, and and that after- That was your first girlfriend? That was my first girlfriend. My How first like you? real girlfriend. Uh, 22 or 23. Oh, so you waited a little while to get the girlfriend. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'd never, because I was a fucked up dude. So girls would be like, well, you're attractive in a way that I want to- um, have sex with you and then never see you again because <laughs> you might kill me. <laughs> no, it's cool. You have kill. You I kill me. There was a girl that I slept with once and she goes, well, no, it's like you have, um, I call them bomber eyes. And I was like, what? And she goes, you have like crazy bomber eyes. I'm super attracted to that, but I also don't want to be in a relationship with it. I was like, Oh, cool. <laughs> That's real healthy. That actually sound healthy. You do pick some good ones. I just, I was just talking to uh, Josh about that. Like, I can't remember who said it to me, but a friend of mine was like, you know, as a woman, like every, every guy that passes me on the sidewalk, I worry, is this guy going to yeah. fucking attack me, mug me, punch me, you know, rape me, whatever. And, and I was like, you're right. I don't ever have that fear of walking ever. down the sidewalk at night in Baltimore. Oh yeah, a little different. I, I, I'm, turn, I'm left and right over my. Yeah, there's fucking definitely some neighborhoods I've yeah. been in. Might have been like, Woo, but, but that's what they feel all the time. They're like all the time. Yeah. Yes, I, exactly. I passed a girl. Yes. And I was driving past a girl on the street, and she was walking in the studio city. And I just saw how she was walking. I was like, she's fucking scared, scared. right now. Yeah. She's just walking alone and scared. I mean, imagine whatever neighborhood you'd be terrified to walk through, in whatever conditions, night, fog, whatever. Yeah. That's what they feel like walking down the fucking street, right. ninety degrees, sunny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because guys are cool. Yeah, because you bomber eyes, bro. <laughs> you should wear sunglasses. <laughs> Dude, these ladies are the fucking favorite, bro. We can date, but I'm wearing sunglasses all the time. That's my thing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so she breaks up. You go. You so go, she breaks. You go yeah, off. she breaks up with me, and I lose my fucking shit. Um, and I'm also at this point where stand up, like everything's just not working. I got no commercials I, I've died like I can't I can't get myself in a well, commercial which is how for three weeks, I know that's right, right. yeah that, <laughs> that's long so, gone so that so 
I'm not booking anything. I'm not making any money. I'm just going for because I'm just living on credit cards, um, which is a, a thing standups do uh, when they're starting out. Yeah. And I've got like, I want to say like, also that that five thousand dollars kept spiraling because that was I was paying. Because at, at that point, I felt like I was getting, I was, I had a little bit of debt, but I was getting ahead of it. And that took me from like $7,000 in debt to like twelve, And then I couldn't. That's right. And then I couldn't get ahead of it. And then it was, it was monthly 20, 20 fucking whatever percent. It's just killing me. So it just keeps spiraling and spiraling. And, uh, and I, I hit this, I hit this point where I'm $40,000 in debt and I just stopped, like I stopped taking care of myself and my friends are like, what's going on? I, cause no one, I just disappear. And everyone's like, what the fuck? People are calling me up like, hey, man, how you doing? Like, I'm getting those calls. Just people checking in, not answering anything. And I'm like, I'm going to just fucking off myself. You got there. Yeah. Whoa. I got there. Um, yeah, I was totally, I was like, how am I going to do it? And uh, I came up with a plan. Uh, I was going to drive up into the hills, into the Los Angeles forest, tape, duct tape a hose to my uh, car uh, tailpipe and then put it through the window and take a sleeping pill and I went and bought the hose I bought the duct tape are you serious yeah I, went, I, I was fully like okay let's do this so you were going to take the sleeping pill so that it it, it just killed you while you were sleeping and yeah you choked to death that was the it. idea but I don't think that works I think it's still a pretty painful I was gonna from, say, what I, from what I've yeah. heard is that it, when you do that then you wake up and you're like oh, everything's bad I'm and pretty sure you're... carbon monoxide will override your fucking sleep pill <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My wife, my my current wife is a, is a, a psychologist, so she's like, "Oh no, when, pills are like super gnarly." Because what what often happens in situations is you live, and then you've got organs that are shut down, and so you're just like a fucking mess after that. That's, oh, it so, that happens a lot. I see. Um. So anyway, so I had a plan. Uh, I, I basically just hated myself. I just, I just well, never. I, I, let me just say this: I saw you pull in an electric car today, Sweet. so hey, I, you're safe from that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come up with a plan B now, bro. <laughs> Your environment group ain't gonna appreciate that, man. No way. <laughs> oh my! I remember God. a friend of mine called me up, and he was like, uh, "How you doing?" And I was like. You know, I'm not. I'm not great. And he's and he's just like, are you are you thinking about doing anything bad to yourself? Because everyone's pretty worried about you. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, Guy it's, in it's a thought. Ain't heard Guy. For weeks. Because <laughs> we heard you went for the glory hole and you could knock it hard. <laughs> like he said, you were just like flopping that thing through the hole. Like you are clearly You're just upset. Pawing it like a cat. <laughs> Wait, um, I want to ask you. Are you during this time? Are you drinking? Are you using drugs? Are you clean? Like, are you? Is this just depression? I don't, and it's I don't, just do not want to diminish it. By no, totally. Just depression, no, it's but a is good there question. other substance abuse? No, nope, I'm not doing anything. I mean, I'm maybe drinking a little bit here and there, but I'm not going out but anymore. So if I'm not going out, I've go never like way. I've never been a guy who drinks at home. So I'm not going out. So yeah, I'm not really doing anything. And what's going through your mind when you're making the fucking purchase of this duct tape and this tube? I'm just going to end it and it's going to finally be over. Like, I'm just, I just hate myself. Like I literally hated myself. I was like, I'm just a piece of shit. Like that's all. So, uh, so what kind I, of car was it? What? what kind of car did you have? I had a, what did I have? Then? What was going to take you out? Um, I had a Nissan Altima. I'm so glad you didn't. Do that. <laughs> like if you said a Chevelle or something, I'd be like, I'd have, I'd have been on. <laughs> Just me gunning it. <laughs> it also had a fucking. They put a pinstripe on it that I never wanted. It's a fucking pinstripe on a fucking Altima. Every yeah, time right. I every time I go to, it, I'd be like, fuck. Why did they do that? It's a fucking Altima. Oh, I remember I showed up and the guy was rushing. He's like, you like, over. you like, right? We do it. We do it for free. I'm like, this is shit, man. Oh, my God. Uh, so, uh, so your friend. So my friend calls me you. up and he's like, you know, are you going to do it? Because and I was like, I'm, you know, I won't. I won't. Trust me. And I, but I've already bought the shit. And, uh, and, he, and he goes, you don't have a plan or anything, do you? Because apparently that's, a, that's like a thing. Like if you've actually made a plan, then that's like a. That's like a serious step. Okay, then, yeah. And I was like, no. And I literally have duct tape and a hose over. While you're ripping <laughs> it with your teeth. 
<laughs> phones on you're like nah 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 so um i remember so i remember this because i had i this is how bad off i was financially i had three pairs of pants left damn so i'm just like jeans no, I didn't or wear like jeans. one night I, pair, I, one night pants, one jeans, one sweatpants. I kind of always just wear the same thing. They're not sweatpants, but they're just like uh, almost like Gap. Uh, uh, what do you call like khaki ish kind yeah. of things? Yeah, chino, chino pants. And I remember I go to my couch to sit down, and I sit in a pair, and the pair of pants I'm wearing just fucking rips from from all the way at the top of the ass all the way down through the crotch and I'm just sitting there and I'm just like fuck I can't even have pants <laughs> and, and thank, I, thank god I have duct tape <laughs> <laughs> and a hose this all works I can, all, I can duct tape and have the hose and I can just sit here and that. shit and then I started fucking laughing I just started fucking laughing I'm like I can't even have fucking pants and then that literally was the moment that just fucking turned it all around. It did. That's it what did. did it. it was purely that comedic sense in me that's like, this is so fucking insane. And and just have and because it's that classic comedy thing, are your pants just fucking splitting? Like, right. rip, and yeah. it was a big loud. It wasn't fucking subtle. It was like, <laughs> you're a loser. <laughs> like it was just. <laughs> And I was just like, oh my God, this is fucking insane. And I literally, so in al -Anon you have a, like a sponsor guy who's they're like an older guy who's been around and I just called him up and I was like, dude, this is what it is. And I just fucking laid it all out. And he was like, let's go, let's go get a cup of coffee. Man. And at that point it was, you do 90, 90, it's just getting out to meetings and talking and talking and talking and other people being like, yep, I get it, I get it never reached out to a therapist or went to see anyone so during that is, time. This is, this is the funny thing of why I brought up Karen earlier is because Karen, when, when Karen broke up with me, I think we were together around a year. I was just fucking devastated. And I had Kaiser and I went to Kaiser to see the, you know, psychologist there. And I sit down and I talk to him for like 10 minutes. And then he, he, he goes here, you should read this. And it's a book called uh, child of alcoholics. And then it was another book, another Alan on book. And I was just like, the fuck is this? My fucking girlfriend broke up with me. Like, what the fuck does that do? What are you, are you even fucking listening to me? And I just got super furious and left. But that guy was spot fucking on. Wow, yeah. But this is like years later, like 15 years later. And that guy was right. And now I was in that place getting that help from those people. Right. Um, I did go to a therapist. Uh, she was super helpful. Did you, so it, do you, if you, if you, and I don't know the answer to this, but if you tell a therapist you're suicidal, do they have to report that? Do they have to have someone come get you to protect you from yourself? I don't know what the no. law is or what you're allowed to do in that situation. No. So they're, they're, um, they have really like specific training on that. Like what, what are the signs that, cause there's a lot like, of people. Listen, that, here's how you do. You want to duct tape it up <laughs> high. Get it up near the muffler. Okay? Don't get an electric car. <laughs> Don't, Don't get, get a fucking electric, electric car. car. And you want to take it all the way up to the fucking catalytic converter, okay? That's where you want to duct tape it tight up there, okay? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they now I learned this through my wife. Like, she, th there are suicidal patients that you're like, come back next week. And then there are pseudo, pseudo, suicidal patients where you're like, Hey, so we need to get in a car and go to a hospital okay. so they can like gauge because they also like they get sued if their patient right. kills themselves and their family's like, what the fuck? So they're they're like whole obviously they don't want the person to die, but then their whole career is on the line. So they're they're pretty I mean, unless they're a bad therapist, they're pretty on top of that shit and they stay on top of those people. They're like, you know, text me, make sure you're OK. You know, so if my wife, my wife is a suicidal person, she doesn't want to put in a hospital because that fucks up your life too in a way you know once you have that on your record it's a weird thing oh, in our in our american thing. system of healthcare, like it can like be, a 5150 is yeah not that a kind of thing. it's not a good thing if we didn't have the healthcare we have it would be fine but right so uh yeah so she has she'll be like yeah i'm getting a text at this time and this and so the person's just gonna be like yeah i'm okay i'm going to bed i'm fine i'm you know here so they, they do that kind of stuff um but i don't think i told her i think i was I, when i got got to the therapist i was like i'm past wanting to kill myself at this point 
Who did you tell that to? How many people did you actually tell you were going to do to commit suicide? Hardly any. Just that one guy. I was like, I would really say it in it? I would say it in meetings. I would say like I was really suicidal, you know. But At then the Al-Anon meetings. Yeah, but I think almost everybody in there. <laughs> <laughs> Here he goes. It. It was, are you good? Here he goes hose, again. Hose? Oh, you do it. Yeah, yeah, we know. Duct tape and hose. What a, <laughs> maybe a pill. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so how did you get there? What what how did you grow up? What was your life like that led to that? Is there a it's, history of this in your family? Um, Is there um no, there's no history of that. There's or, a history of drinking. Uh definitely alcoholism. My dad's a my dad the the older I get the more I'm like, "Oh, he's he's more fucked up than I thought." Like just constantly every now year, you're, especially your dad. How old's your son? He's uh 9. 9. He doesn't get to see my kid. He's out. Oh, really? It's yeah. not allowed. He's done. We're done. Uh yeah, cuz I was we were having a family reunion and I have a niece and nephew and my nephew is like hmm, 14 maybe and uh he's a spindly dude and like uh uh you know glasses and the the nerdish looking type and and he's walking through the he's walking my dad is my da everyone's outside barbecue and having a good time my dad's sitting on the couch watching a game and my nephew walks through and my dad looks at him and goes geek <laughs> and i'm just like I'm just like, like what the dick. fuck just happened? That's your fucking grandson, you That's stupid grandson. asshole. Like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, ah, he can handle it. I'm like, well, who, who gives a shit if he can handle it? He probably gets enough of that at school. Out of nowhere. Fucking... Yeah, exactly. That's his friend. Uh, just... <laughs> Thanks. I love you too, Grandpa. All right, you fucking loser. <laughs> the fucking, go give me a hot dog, you fucking loser. So my nephew goes, I go, I go, I go, does he do that a lot? And he goes, yeah, I mean, yeah. I go, okay. So call him a lush. And he goes, what? I go, I go, next time he says something to you, look at him and go, you're a fucking lush. <laughs> and so about a half hour later, he comes out. 30, goes, it's only 30 minutes. I love that he's hitting it. Anthony's been yelling at it. He's like, what? A, fuck that. Wait, give me a half hour. Fucking pussies. <laughs> 30 minutes later at the same party not next christmas not same party <laughs> same party he, he comes out and he goes he was really surprised i'm like fuck yeah he was because that's the shit i never did but now i'll teach you and my sister's like what did you do i go i told him to call dad a lush and she goes oh that's fine <laughs> <laughs> but that's the kind of shit I grew up with, right? Just he was just he used to call me a, like I'd be like fourteen, he'd be like you little teetotaler because I wouldn't drink. What's I don't even is that a term? What's a teetotaler? Teetotaler I think is a is a term from like the fifties that's like you you're a guy who doesn't drink. Gotcha. So you're a, yeah you're a fucking sure. pussy yeah, yeah basically. So I would get that all the time because he belonged to this thing called Native Sons of the Golden West. Which is just a drinking club, <laughs> like just full, like they do, they do charity I'm shit. I'm a native son, God damn it! I'm a native son. <laughs> I'm from California, <laughs> unlike you, Oregon, you fucking piece of shit. Uh. <laughs> so he would, he tried to get me into those things when I was a teenager. What the club, like a club? Because you you would officially be able to join it when you were eighteen. I found this out because he he had me join. But uh, but yeah, he would bring me to. You were officially a member of the Native Sons of the Golden West. I don't. I'm not a. I don't pay my dues. But yeah, he. <laughs> oh, you paid your motherfucking dues. <laughs> you got a lifetime motherfucking membership, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the dudes never stop. Uh, yeah, so he, so what? When I, when I was young, he would bring me to barbecues and stuff, and try to get me to drink, even though I was a teenager. And I'd be like, "Dude, I don't turn it loose with you. I turn it loose with my friends. I'm not interested." Um, so when I turned 18, I got a card in the mail, and it was that he had started paying dues for me. And then, and then he was like, "Hey, uh, can you come over on this day, um, like at six? And I was like, "Yeah, okay." And he goes, we're gonna go somewhere. And he drives me up to this thing, and it's a ceremony. And Is that I, you? He, yeah, he didn't tell me. It's oh, my initiation shit. ceremony. It's dudes with swords up, and you walk through swords. the fucking thing, <laughs> and you get it. Why do they have fire swords? I don't involved? know. Because that's Should California. United. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Sir Dave Anthony of the Sons of the Golden West. Swords. Yeah, so I got uh, I got initiated. The, the password. What do you do? What do you? The do? password's Trucky. If you ever want to get Trucky, in, Trucky is it? Yeah, it was. They were like, the password's Trucky. I'm like, for what? And they're like, <laughs> if the mafia ever calls, <laughs> Trucky. <laughs> you should have said that when the mob called you. All He's right, like, all right. I'm not gonna say that, but Trucky. <laughs> oh, all right. He's sons of he's sons, sons of the Golden West. So what's the It's ceremony? when you're handcuffed out in the forest and they're about to shoot you. <laughs> Chucky, man! Chucky! <laughs> so stand out! He's one of us! Stand out! Put your swords away, boys! <laughs> swords! Sheath your sword! Now! He's one of us! <laughs> oh, God. What if they have swords? <laughs> what if they have a sword? <laughs> Fuck. They had a meeting where they're like, what can we do? Like, you want to get muskets? Nah. You guys, I have a cannon. Nah, that's way too much attention. I got swords. Yeah, let's do swords. It's swords. Man. Yeah. We're on to something. Fuck, it's California, swords, yeah. right? We're sword guys. And is it only you, you that day, or is this like a graduation? There were, there were like other dudes. Several <laughs> others as well. There, there were a lot of, there were a lot of k- kids that were like 18. Kids. They were, they were like, I don't want to do this. And they're, and they're all dads are like, you're joining the crew. And all, and all the 18 year olds are like, we'll look at each other like, how, how do we get out of here, man? Uh, so yeah, so Trucky Man, I could go to any uh, any of their what do they call? I don't even know what they're like the legions. They're like their clubhouses yeah, or fucking like whatever. Lodge or and something. you could knock on the door and be like, "Hey, man, Trucky, and Trucky. Like, he one of us. Uh, get in yeah, here. Get in. He was native born. This <laughs> one, <laughs> native." Uh, but it was just a drinking club. They just went there to get fucking shit faced. It was on a, a lot Thursday of pe- night. all guys. I'm all assuming. dudes. All dudes. Uh, they do have a native uh, daughters of the Golden West, but they have their. It's separate. They're not in the same clubhouse. Or I would love it if they it. were like ten times rowdy or oh, shit, you know, just tearing so the place great. up. Just fighting <laughs> shit. They don't have swords. It's like fucking machine guns and shit. Like you gotta run a gauntlet over there. <laughs> <laughs> fucking two by fours yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with nails. <laughs> What are you getting initiated? I'm just trying to get a beer. This is what the <laughs> fuck happens around this motherfucker. So, uh, so there's a lot of drinking there. Uh, I don't. What, what did we? What started the fucking? We started with you talking about your dad drinking and getting you into drinking. Oh yeah, the teetotaler. Yeah, the so teetotal. you were he, you were drinking early when you tried it though, yeah. right? So yeah, I, I mean, I started. I mean, personally, I started doing drugs and drinking when I was like. 13, 14. Yeah, that is young. Uh, yeah, super young. That's like cocaine at 14. Really? Yeah, yeah. How'd was, you get into that? Dude, we grew up, uh, the the place I grew up, Marin County, was, there were, we were rich. I was poor, but it, it was a rich place. And uh, it was always the rich kids that had the oh, drugs. Oh, 100%. Always. Rich kids always had the drugs. Always had the cocaine. Always. Where I grew up, rich kids had cocaine. Always. Yeah. Um, I mean, people would, uh, like one guy I knew would just, we'd go over to his uncle's house and he'd go and his uncle had a jar or like a canister and he would sneak in at night and just take a couple scoops out. Jesus. Cause it was just a canister yeah. of cocaine. So, um, one night we were doing, oh, we were all doing mushrooms. We took mushrooms during the day. And then for some reason, someone turned on the TV and, and a, a promo for the news came on. It was Dan Rather, and he was like, and later we'll go to the teenage drug capital of the world, Marin County. And we were all like, yeah, <laughs> Where am I not mushrooms? <laughs> like just. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, I started super young. That was one thing. So I didn't want to drink with him. I was gonna say that's, that's what it was. Oh, it wasn't that I didn't yeah. drink. It was that I never wanted, at, starting at a very young age, ever to show him any fucking joy. I never wanted to show him me ever having fun. And he just wanted to drink with you. That's what he wanted to do. His yeah. bonding was like, Drinking. we're going to drink together. Yeah. yeah. And my thing was, I'm going to shut you out of everything in my fucking life. So I emotionally was already fucking done with this guy. I mean, he, because he was a drunk and he was abusive and he didn't fucking care. And he got remarried to a woman who was just a, a, a drunk and would just call me a piece of shit. And, and like, what like she would fuck? just be like, she would, she would, this is what she would do. In the middle of the day, she would put on negligee, like a see-through fucking uh, like negligee thing. She would walk through the house. She would then run the bath. She would get in the bath and then scream about how awful I was. And he w- and this was my Sunday with my dad. And then I would be sitting on the couch. And she's just yelling from the back. Yeah, like I. She's literally just right down the hall. 
and she, and I'd be sitting on the couch and we'd be watching whatever sports and she'd be like, what a fucking piece of shit that fucking kid is. And like, he never- Like you had left or something and she's just like, telling like, him? Yeah, but you just- Cocaine's all stepped on. <laughs> I can't stand him. I really can't. <laughs> oh, he's still here? Hey, Dave. <laughs> yeah, but yes, also, I did not step on the fucking blow. Why am I getting shit for that? <laughs> uh, so he would just sit there and never say a word. And this went he on for He wouldn't say anything to you ever. Like, don't or her. That. Don't he never, it's like he never said to her, he don't do that. It it, which I would just fucking sit there and be like, wow, this is, this is a shitty Sunday. Because yeah. that was every fucking Sunday. So I fucking hated the dude. Like, I just fucking hated him. When I graduated from uh, high school, we had to write a letter to our parents. And I was like, okay. And I just wrote, you have never, I remember the first line, you have never been there for me. And then I just went off. Damn. And my English teacher read it and he was like, this is what you want to give your dad? And I was like, yeah. He goes, okay. He goes, I get it. Cause he knew what he, he, that the, my English teacher was super great guy and he knew what the deal was. Uh, so he was like, okay. So at graduation, I hand it to him. We're supposed to all hand it to our parents and then we go back and get in line. And, <laughs> and afterwards he comes up to me and he goes, ha, I got what you were saying. It was a great joke. And I was just like, holy oh, that was fuck, dude. How, that was the most from the heart thing I've ever done. <laughs> How infuriating is and that? And I was just like... He's like, over there laughing at it. He's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You call me a piece of shit right here in the third paragraph. Oh, my God, man. This is great. You're like, you motherfucker. <laughs> it, and then it says you're a cunt at the end. That's so great. You're such a good kid. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, I just... And it was... So, I wasn't hiding how much I disliked him. And it just went on like that. But the weird thing is he's your dad, so, like... But where are you getting the he's your dad? Is that the innate stuff or is that your mom saying like, look, he is your father? Like, No, my mom didn't like him either. Like, okay. dude, he he was starting when I was a baby. He like wouldn't come home all the time. He would be out fucking other women, like literally would be gone for two days and then come rolling in. One time she she tried to block the door with a chair and he broke the door to try to get in that like just fucking crazy shit. Yeah. Um, used to beat me with a leather strap. Uh, I paid him for that. Wait, I, I'd give him like 20 bucks. I would come like a fucking racer. <laughs> I think you might have to build a wing up on that Alaska spot and get your own thing going up there, man. You want to go up to the bad boy, uh, bad boy level? It's pretty weird up there. Oh, um, uh, yeah, so he had a leather strap that he, so instead of Not like instead belt. of a spanking, it was, it was it was literally a specific to beat your kid's leather strap from back in the day. Damn, I think that it was handed down through the family. <laughs> it's, <an laughs> like, it's our thing. It's our fight. <laughs> Some people don't ever, it. don't ever throw this strap away. <laughs> this is what we hit our children with. We did have a Van Gogh. I'm not sure where that is, <laughs> but here, take this, keep this. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of that. Uh, so my mom was more just not there. Like she just checked out. But so, are they still living together or are they split? Up until I was six, they lived together okay. and then they, and then they bailed. When they got divorced, I was just like, okay, cool. And you're living with mom though. I'm living with mom, living with my sister. Um, yeah, just have to go over to his house on Sundays. He would just like, I mean, back then there were no ATMs, so he would pick us up, drive to a bar, go, I'm gonna go cash a check, you guys go next door to Taco Bell and eat, and then he'd be in the bar for two hours and we'd just be fucking hanging in a car, like, well, okay, this is Sunday. Are you serious? Yeah, every fucking Sunday. Sometimes he'd go- And then you go home and get yelled at by the girl. Yeah, yeah, basically, that was it. Awesome, right? That's a great Sunday. Um, well, you're a dad, I mean, I, yeah. this is kind of shit we do, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I leave my daughter in a car all the time, like, listen, I'm going to CVS, and then I don't even go to CVS. <laughs> I go to the bar for three hours and I just leave her sitting there. I'm like, you got fucking cheese. It's FaceTime me. You need some. Yeah, daddy got his medicine. 
You want to go do uh, drive through the mountains now? It is unbelievable. I, I started reading this parenting book that someone gave me in the first couple pages. Just, I was like, wow. Oh, it's a recommendation. I read it and I was like, it says, of course, children are misbehaving more these days because we don't discipline like we did back then. If you popped off at your parents, They're terrified. Boom. Yeah, you get hit. You get hit. Yeah. And you shut the fuck up. Yeah. And you learn not to do that. Yeah. But today, you can't discipline like that. So it makes sense to all these professionals that, yeah, no wonder everyone's fucking talking back and popping off. Yeah. And you're seeing more of this outrage and people are like, well, the parents, the parents like, yeah, well, the parents also are limited in a little bit of things. Right. They can. I'm not saying you should ever hit your kids, but it's also, they don't want you yelling at them in public. They don't want right. you embarrassing them in public or, you know, they don't want, you know, some, a lot of parents don't even like the teachers doing it. They'll go against the teacher yeah, for that shit, you know? So that's, it's all like this, this weird, fucking you know shift in parenting that well it's a reaction to getting slapped and hit and everything now it's an overreaction the other way that's right it's an um, overcorrection you can sure. yell at your i fucking yell, i've yelled at my kid in public if he does something bad i don't give a shit being embarrassed in public did more for psychologically to me yeah. than my dad ever disciplining me i'd be like oh i don't want to feel like this shit again like i didn't yeah. give a fuck what anybody in the house thought no i'm, you know? I'm right there with you um also punching him in the nose, just enough so it bleeds. You punched your dad in the nose? No, my son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not break it, but bleed. Not, but yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just get that right. cartilage. Solid you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause the look of shock on, on their face. And he's like, that's because I asked for a candy bar? That's right, that's man. That's right, motherfucker. That's, that's right. your blood. You taste it, <laughs> taste it, taste it. That candy bar go down easy after that. Anyway, you can, have, you the, ever you can get, have the candy bar. Did you ever get into a physical altercation with your dad? Yeah, so there's the the one time that I... So, so we talk so, about this because there's always... Even if you have a good parent, there's... In, in boys, there does come a point where you just feel like you're the cock of the walk. You can take them. You know, I, talk, I think it was I 14 for me and my dad very quickly put me on the ground so fast right. and gave me that... I was like, mm, I am not ready for this. Yeah, we yeah. were... Uh, I want. I was. I think I'm gonna be 14. I want. I wanted to go to a Rolling Stones concert. Uh, my dad came over to pick me up. My mom was like, "Okay, let's talk about this," because I don't want him to go. Because the guy he he wants to go with clearly smokes pot. He's older. He did smoke pot. So I'm in the living room in there, and at this point, I'm completely out of control. Like I'm just a fucking maniac. Um, and they're like, no, you're not going to the concert. I'm like, why? What? And they're like, cause he's, we know he smokes pot and he's a bad influence. And I, I wanted to be like, I smoke pot. Dad smokes pot. Everybody here smokes pot. Um, and my mom said something and I was like, shut up, slut. Whoa. Yeah. And then Your I looked at like, my dad. My boy. <laughs> I have never, I have never gotten a high five like Only that. Only time you ever saw your dad cry. <laughs> I just remember looking at my dad and the fucking anger that was coming off him. I was like, oh, this is about to go down. So I ran. Where? I ran. Out of the house? Out or? of the house, down the stairs, down the street. And then next to our, next to our house is just a giant open field. And there's a, there's a like a walking path that people would yeah. go to cut through. So I'm running up that and I get just about 20 feet up and I am just fucking full body tackled. Your dad? Yeah. Damn, full he had wheels, huh? body. Yeah, yeah, it was surprising. I was, <laughs> I was super surprised. 14. I, I thought I was just yeah. like, I'm gone, baby. Yeah. I was not gone. Uh, I just get taken down and then uh, we come up and I'm like, let's fucking do this and just crack. Um, but yeah, we're not doing he this. Punched you? Yeah. <laughs> He put me down. <laughs> Where did he get you? In the face? In the stomach. And then once, yeah, once in the face and once in the stomach. Two? He took two shots? Yeah, one stomach first. And this then one's crack. for your mom. This one's for me. <laughs> you won't drink with me? <laughs> and then his girlfriend's coming up there. Hold him down. Hold him down. <laughs> in a negligee seat. <laughs> oh, I want him to see my pussy out when I tell him he's a dick. <laughs> I want him to see my pussy when I'm talking. <laughs> oh, God. So that was our main altercation. I don't know. Even, I don't think I could fight my son like that. Like, 
I could not fight my son like that. I, I, I mean, know I can't. Two punches. I would feel so guilty after the first one. I don't even have a son, but I'm saying if I did. I, I feel what like your the, daughters. I, I, I could definitely hit my daughter. <laughs> never, never fist fight my daughter. <laughs> when she's she, four. So right now it's prime time for me. <laughs> um, I would probably just take their jersey and pull it over their head like a hockey player oh, yeah. and just shove them down yeah. or something like that. But I couldn't go. No, I couldn't. Hit. He fucking hit you, brought you down. Ah, he went one, two on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Man. So, yeah, it wasn't fucking... It but was your relationship great. with your mom... I know everybody has their teenage outbursts. Was 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 that a, a solid relationship? Was that no. a good relationship? <laughs> no, not even remotely. She was just totally fucking checked out. Like, she was just... It was like having a, like a ro- like a robot almost like that was there that would help you out. Like here's your food, here's your you know you need clothes, here's clothes. Like it was there was just a caregiver. A, yeah, but yeah. It, there was no like person there. So it was just like I yeah, I always say I was raised by wolves. Like it was just like I was fucking on my own trying to figure shit out. Didn't work. I don't know. I think you're doing pretty damn. I good. killed a lot of people. <laughs> 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 Oh my god! But then all my drink, and then I started. I I I was never. I'm not an alcoholic or a drug addict, but I I'm drinking all the time and tons of drugs, and you know, all the way up until mid twenties, basically, and then I stopped that. Are you clean and sober? No, I still drink, but it's not like like I have a couple. I don't like to. No jar of cocaine just sitting around the house for the. Oh yeah, I got blow. Yeah, (laughs) what? That's not drugs. No, that's daddy's medicine. Daddy, daddy wants to stay up tonight. Can you imagine having just coke out like that with the kids it's around? It's fucking and shit? crazy. It's nuts. It is. It's nuts. really crazy. The shit that used to be. So I mean, it, we used to have. You know, my grandmother drove a Buick and smoked in the car with us in it and shit. Oh, smoked in the dude, house. With they us all. In it I remember when you. Do you remember you would come into your house and there would be a, just a layer of smoke in the yep. house? People have no idea. A layer of smoke just fucking floating, floating in, right in the there. air, mm-hmm. like right, right, the curtain at, stink. right where you breathe. Yeah, right where you yeah, breathe. Yeah, everything smells like cigarette. It was just the way it was. That's and my dad never smoked, but my mom was a huge smoker. My dad was the oh we I one time we he drove me to a baseball game. That's what I wanted to ask you about sports. Did he ever show up at your sporting so, events? Did he ever coach or any of that stuff? Uh, to be he involved? coached all my teams, which <laughs> was fucking that blows me away. Which is a fucking nightmare. That blows me away. He yeah. coached every team. Coached all my fucking teams, which I hated. I hated that he was fucking coaching my teams. Um and then I like like I was a pitcher and my friends are the only reason you're pitching is because your dad's the coach. Like you just get that kind of shit. Uh so but your dad can yell at you more when you're on that's the mound. That's right. Can't he yell can. at you at second base all game. Uh, that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, I never thought about that. That's totally about true. about every pitch. <laughs> what the fuck you do? I said nibble the corners. God damn it. Every pitch he could yell at you. He also would, he was the, uh, back then, the coaches were getting fights all the time. So he was the guy that would be screaming at the umpire and, and like yelling it and pushing the other coaches, pushing each other. Push like it him. was just, it was yeah. just all the fucking time. He got kicked out of a game and went and sat instead of leaving like an like you're a fucking coach. You got kicked out. Go get in your car. Right. Have some self respect. He goes and sits in the outfield above the fucking fence. So I'm just like, like there's visible. my asshole dad right, yeah. that just got kicked out of the fucking game. Um, yeah. So he was he was all about sports, but we still bonded like Niners, Giants, like, you know, the San Francisco teams. Um, that was the only connection we had, basically. But then one time, like he would get shit faced at games and drive me right, home. Yeah. And I remember one time we're driving. Is he bringing over. a cooler to to the games? And no, stuff? we didn't have that. He would just get. He's not he butter maker out get, there. <laughs> just giving the kids beer and shit. God, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Um, no, he would just, uh, he would get shit faced at a Giants game or sometimes an A's game. And I remember driving over the Richmond bridge and it's, it's five after a game's over and he keeps nodding off and I'm hitting him. I'm like 14, 15. I'm hitting him to wake him up cause he's passing out cause he's so hammered Jesus as he's driving Christ. over a fucking bridge. Holy shit. I mean, I'm saying my dad knew how to party. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. And and I remember one time he eventually got a DUI when he was older, but it was because Like what age? Dude, he was like 
50? 60. Wow, that is, that's a long time to get one. Yeah. But back then, I remember you would get pulled over by the cops and they'd be like, come on, Frank, you're yeah. going, and they just yeah. take you home. I don't know how many times that happened to him, but I bet it was a few, because he, he knew everybody in the town. If a cop pulled him over, he was a lawyer, he knew all the cops. Like, I just don't think, I think he for sure probably got driven home a few times. Um, but yeah, he got it. But then now years later, he's 60, everything's changed. It's not cool to drink and drive. And uh, he got into some altercation with a cab, got out of his car, kicked the cab, dented the cab. A vehicle that he should have been in to go home. He's getting out of his car to kick to a cab. Kick in a cab. He kicks the cab. The cab is terrified. The guy speeds off. My dad chases him. Oh my god! And then the cops nab him because he's chased. Yeah, you know, it's well, a high speed chase yeah, through yeah, fucking right. the suburbs. It's fucking bullet up there in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> the cops are like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm in pursuit. <laughs> I'm a native son. <laughs> They're like, get your fucking ass in the squad car, man. Uh, so he would always say after that, they would, there's no, I can drive drunk. There's, they would have never got me if I hadn't kicked that cab. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy. It was the kicking of the cab, yeah, not the high speed chase. Scot yeah. free, man. So, what age do you then finally get away from all of this and and get out and start figuring shit out? Yeah, so I'm 37, uh, 38. But what are you in college? Are you did you? Oh fuck! You stay home I, for I leave. I leave home at seventeen. Okay, seventeen. Um, I go to a junior college, but one that I have to traveled so i i literally instead of going to the junior college in your town like everybody else does i'm like i'm gonna go to one in another fucking town so i moved from northern california <laughs> to central california and go to a junior college so you actually it's like going to college for yeah you. except i didn't college. have the grades to get into a real college so yeah, i'm just either. like i'll go to a fucking anything to get it so i left i left home at 17. And then was pretty much on my own he, he'd give me like 200 bucks a month or something but i had to like take care of all my shit you know so after after that, yeah, I, I pretty much handled on my own business, uh, and then I was, but I was a fucking mess until I was thirty eight, and that's when you start figuring it out. Yeah, and what do you? What happens? Like you when start, figuring it out? Yeah, like what was the light bulb? You go into therapy, and it all starts. The girl, to, the girlfriend thing, and then you like know, she's a psychologist. Your wife? Now, she right? wasn't then. She was. Uh, we, so we ended up getting back together. The girl that broke up with me oh, with the okay. burrito and the thing. Yeah, so she went through her. She went through her own shit uh, uh, separately, and then like a year later, we're like, ah, we're both kind of different people now. I don't want to kill myself anymore. Or like yeah. you know, um, so we ended up getting back together, and now we're married and have a kid. Uh, oh, she's the girl. Yeah. Oh wow. All yeah. right, that's your wife. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I just basically fucking worked on my shit. I went to therapy. I did the Al Anon stuff. I just climbed out of the hole using the the mental health stuff that's available to yeah. you you know if you if you can't afford it there's there's places like alan on there's places out there that you can for sure yeah. yeah do you find yourself the husband of a psychologist do you feel like you're in a fishbowl do you feel like you're being studied when you're no. in moments where you're whether it's disciplining your son or whatever it is no she doesn't really do that it's like she turns it off kind of but she also knows everything about me that I mean, she's like, you're it's amazing. You're not in prison or like, yeah, like is, she literally actually, is like, yeah. she's like, she goes of all the clients I have, you're still the guy that I'm like, how the fuck did he get out of there? Like, cause most, I mean, if I had a gun, I'm in prison. Thank God you had an Ultima. <laughs> And if you had a gun, you're probably dead. Maybe not prison. You might have done that. I instead. might, yeah, I might have definitely, but I would have definitely pulled out a gun and shot at people. Dude, I had, I did a high speed chase through Los Angeles. You were chasing someone? Yeah. I don't remember what the guy did, but I'm, I'm, I'm driving drunk and it's 2000 and the guy cuts me off or something and then flips me off. And it's uh, it's not my hood. It, it's we're going into we're going into like fucking Crenshaw and shit. I'm doing ninety on the freeway to chase no. this guy on the on the streets, city streets. Jesus Christ! And this guy clearly thinks 
there is a fucking lunatic after me because there was a fucking lunatic after him. Like, it's like probably 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Oh, man, you're fucking and, um, crazy. <laughs> you're fucking crazy. You're going into fucking... <laughs> He's just probably calling everybody. Why he's, he's coming, guys? <laughs> oh, I got his ass. No, no, he's right behind. Me. <laughs> and I the, uh, and it went on for fifteen minutes, maybe. I mean, and it started near. It started near the Staples Center. Damn, you chased them all the way, dude. Down. I'm. There were times yeah. I turned off my lights so he <laughs> wouldn't see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. That's right. <laughs> Fucking recon, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can only imagine what that guy was oh, thinking. Oh, he was probably shitting himself. <laughs> 2000 probably didn't have a cell phone or anything. Who but knows? you're right. He was. De I definitely think he was heading to his neighborhood. I definitely think he was like taking me to you know his fucking place. Yeah. I was in. I was in places I'd never been. And dude, I was fucking like and what car would you getting have done? like. I have no fucking idea what, what I would, would have done. Would have if he stopped nothing. and got out and be like, what's up? I would have been like, I uh, no. Oh, I thought it was somebody else. Your license plate <laughs> frames loose. Your license plate frames tilted, so it's coming off. <laughs> anyway, just get some duct tape and a hug. I have some in the trunk if you <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you about this glory hole in Alaska. <laughs> I'm the glory hole guy. Oh my god! I just remember at, it so went you had on for, rage. Were you a, were you a rager? Oh yeah, yeah. That was full on rage, dude. I mean, that was the only way I could work it out. I this I tell people this until I went to Al Anon, I did not have feelings, and people trip out on that. But people in Al Anon, a lot of people were like, they get "Yep." That. So you shut down all your feelings. It's the only way to survive the fucking chaos and madness and growing up in that shit. So you literally just turn everything off. That's why I fully get like, I get terrorists. Because that's what they are. They have no feelings. They're just anger. So they don't have that. They don't like feel sad or happy. It's just different levels just of anger. Furious. And then and then you go to therapy and you fucking talk about shit. You don't hate yourself anymore. And then you're like, oh, I got feelings. And every a lot of people are fucked up. Well, everyone's a lot of people. Up. Are fucked everyone's up. got their own fucked up thing. Yeah. Everybody does. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. And now you're a dad. How old your son? Uh, yeah, I'm a good dad, by the way. <laughs> you are a good dad. I was gonna say, I watch you out your videos out there with baseball. You doing yeah. a lot with that. He's fun, he's a really he, oh, dude, he's a fucking machine. Uh, yeah, he's a really good kid. I mean, I I'm just like total opposite. Yeah. I just go total opposite. But where's your where's your dad alive still? Your dad? Yeah, still alive, I don't. Right? I haven't talked to him in years. Is he in still in California. Yeah, he's still in California. He doesn't try to reach out. Yeah, he, oh, does, he does. But he's I'm done. Uh, I, I, when my kid was like three, my kid had a like a Save the Earth shirt on, and my dad's like, "What is that shit? You fucking raise him to be an environmentalist?" And I'm just like, "Yeah, that's what I said in college, asshole." Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you're just cluing into this There's shit. Nothing about it, you know. <laughs> You said this little fucker. But I threw him in the pool. We just started sinking, little fucking pussy. He's two, Dad. He's two. Uh, so he, so we got into an argument, and this had happened. This has happened many times in my life. Where I remember one time he he brought us uh, someone's house for Christmas. Uh, like my uncle, my not my uncle's, but in my uncle's town, we went over to my uncle's house, and then he's like, "Hey, we're all going over to a friend's." for Christmas dinner. And so we go and there's like 15, 20 people there. And it was during the Iraq war and I'm against the Iraq war. And we start arguing about it at the table and then we're screaming at each other. And then about an hour later, I'm like, there's no one at the table. Like I'm so enraged that I can't even see people getting up and leaving. <laughs> oh, you didn't see it. I didn't see any of that. And so this is the same situation. So now it's years later, I have a kid and he fucking triggers that thing in me and I'm just, and we're going at it. And I look around, I'm like, my nephew's gone, my niece is gone, my sister's gone, my brother-in-law's gone, my wife's gone, it's just me and him. And I'm like, fuck, I cannot ever do this. So that was it. I was like, I'm done, he's out. It's also like, you know, climate change is a fucking real deal. And if you're gonna sit there and tell me you don't fucking care when you have a 
three year old uh, grandson, then you don't care about that kid. Right. You don't because you're old. It doesn't matter anymore to you. Your time to make choices about the future is fucking over. Check out, do what the young people want to do. So I, for those two reasons, I was like, no moss. And it eats him alive because the kid's a fucking amazing baseball player. Does he follow you on social media and get to see? I blocked him on a lot of social media, but I'm sure he still does. Uh, but he'll send messages to my wife, who's also now completely over him. Uh, she would, she's a therapist, so she's always like, I mean, I see right, right. what the deal is. Uh, always give a longer leash. To yeah, but the, then the therapists. That's right. And then, but at some point, she's like, I cannot fucking. Do this. <laughs> All right, this one can go fuck himself. Uh, so, yeah, so he doesn't get to see the kid. Uh, and uh, he's just out. And he's not in good health. Um, he's not, his living situation is a fucking night. Will you, go, will you go to his funeral? No. 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 What if your sister says she'd like you to go to the funeral? She won't. She, cause she's not going either. Uh, I don't know if there will be a funeral because I don't know who will throw it. Throw it. <laughs> that's, that's very Freudian right there. <laughs> can't wait to throw your funeral. Can't wait to throw your funeral, motherfucker. I can't wait. Oh, gotta be a pinata. I already have a bill. I already have the pinata. <laughs> it's gonna be a coffin pinata. Filled with fucking all the candy you hated, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh my uh, god! Dude. I don't know if my sister will actually have a funeral for him. If he dies and his and his girlfriend is still alive, she would. But I don't you show know. up in her negligee and shit. <laughs> I don't want him to see my pussy when he's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't go. I don't, my sister would probably go. She does feels she obligated. Still keep in touch with him at all? She does, but it's not. She's just she her her from her standpoint. It's like. It's easier to just let him come over on the once a month that he wants to have some drinks and leave than it is to be like, get out of here because she lives near him. So yeah. I can cut him out easily. He's never going to fucking not show pulling up. up in front of your place, blowing the horn and right. shit, which yeah. is what I think he would do if he lived right. near me. So I don't have to. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you, dude. That's uh, you come from a hell of a background and you're kicking ass these days for sure. You've been for a while. You, you do a lot, dude. Yeah, it's uh, you're I'm, a good I, dad. You are a good dad. I, and I really didn't start turning my career around and stuff until he came along. And I was like, I mean, That's, I worked out a lot of other stuff. And then I was like, oh, I don't want him to look at me and go what happened did you right, not do yeah. anything <laughs> right like that's when i made my first album and i started like mm -hmm. putting shit together yeah can you imagine just being like when he's 18 signing him up for like an american legion so you can drink with him and shit could you just imagine, like you look back at that and be like that is not what i want to do with my no kid. it's fucking <laughs> crazy just like hey you know what we need me and you as a drinking club <laughs> We could do that right here in the house for free, Dad. Hey, son, you want to drink with a bunch of six-year-old dudes? It's fucking awesome. Yeah, right. All Californians. None of them believe in climate change. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, dude, thank you so much for uh, coming on here. I really appreciate yeah, thanks you for having opening me. up and bearing your soul. Um, again, promote whatever you'd like, please. Planet Change 10. P-L-A-N-I-T. Change 10. It's on Facebook. And... Uh, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I left Twitter. Uh, you did? Yeah, I'm done. I was just talking to people about what a dumpster fire Twitter It really is. And, and I was talking to Al Madrigal, and he was just like, dude, I'm talking to people that are not on Twitter, and they're getting so much done. And he goes, it's just not worth it. I started getting attacked by these guys, and I was just like, I can't. I can't. I'm just not interested in the fucking bullshit. Yeah. I just use it to promote. Shit. That's what that's I'm gonna it. do. That's I'm gonna all I do. I want to find an app that I c will send it to Twitter, it's so I don't ever have to open up a Twitter app and it just pops up and I never have to go yeah. there. Um, so I'm personally off Twitter, but the dollops on there, um, and then my podcast, the dollop man. It's a history podcast. I read a story to Gareth Reynolds he's never heard, and he reacts, and people seem to like it. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's good. Great, it's, it's fucking awesome. It's it the is the most awesome. fun I've ever had. Yeah, good yeah. for you. Yeah. Thanks. Well, thank you again. I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, including Twitter, ryansickler.com. Talk to y'all next Monday. See y'all. He next. has an album out. I got a new album out. <laughs> Guys, get a hold of yourself. Go get that. I'll talk to y'all next Monday. See y'all next Tuesday.